65 million years ago, towards the end of the Upper Cretaceous period, when after various shocks, life was struggling to resume its normal course, a huge asteroid headed straight for the planet Earth. This asteroid is indeed colossal, since it measures nearly 6.2 miles in diameter and weighs more than a billion tons. It is a real bomb that is heading toward the planet Earth, with potentially the energy of several billion times that of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Despite the levels of extinction that the dinosaurs have been facing for some time now, they're beginning to recover and rise up step by step. But it is at this precise moment that the asteroid chooses to get closer to the planet. The asteroid's coming in at an insane speed, over 12,000 miles per hour, far too fast for anything to have the power to slow it down. In view of its size, its weight, its speed, the impact that is being prepared will be able to create a real upheaval for all the fauna and flora. During this time, the asteroid continues its path without anything to stop it. When the asteroid finally enters the Earth's atmosphere, it marks the beginning of the fifth major extinction event known on the planet. This last one is very significant because it is called the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction and it marks the end of the Mesozoic Era, referring to the existence of dinosaurs. On that day, a world populated by two million animal species suddenly came to an end. In a few seconds, the billions of tons of asteroids were literally pulverized. By crashing into Earth, the asteroid became a meteorite and formed a crater 31 miles deep. The energy released is so phenomenal that the rock of the Earth's crust behaves like a liquid element. The impact is seen even from the moon. In a fraction of a second, all the water within 37 miles turns to steam, instantly killing millions of animals. Animals that were about 10 miles from the impact point didn't even have time to feel anything. The asteroid crashed towards present-day Mexico off the Yucatan Peninsula creating a crater of more than 124 miles in diameter at this location. The hole left on Earth at that moment is huge, but in addition to that, the asteroid landed in the worst possible place on the planet. The underground is full of potentially harmful natural elements. By striking the blue planet, this giant meteorite plunged on a region populated by sedimentary rock, that is to say rich in oil, but not only. This has the potential to trigger a new avalanche of catastrophes, each more significant than the next. The consequences of this impact will soon follow and will be disastrous for each of the living beings populating the planet. Three seconds after the impact, a boiling cloud of vaporized rock advances on the ocean at supersonic speed. This is the shock wave. It releases a phenomenal heat wave while crossing the ocean. Everything in its path evaporated. Not crushed or melted, but changed into gas. Part of the Earth itself was reduced to vapor. At supersonic speed, the shock wave is heading northwest. Because of the angle of impact, it's heading straight for the American coast. Three minutes after the impact, the animals of the American coast did not notice any abnormal manifestation. The hadrosaurs, who are eating peacefully, will probably only have a brief moment to worry about the glowing sky and the distant rumble before being reduced to ashes. Further inland, the Quetzalcoatlus have ruled the skies for thousands of years. These extraordinary birds had a wingspan of 14 meters. But there will be no hunting today. An enormous deafening noise silences all living things. It is an unbearable den, capable of deafening anyone with the snap of the fingers. As the asteroid comes crashing down on the ocean floor, the shockwave devastates everything in its path. The noise reverberates and reaches a deafening height, 
For hundreds of miles around, the entire land and vegetation is immediately burned. For both fauna and flora, it is the beginning of a true mass extinction. No one can fight against this impact, and the most exposed species become extinct instantly without being able to defend themselves. The shock is brutal, as well as the extinction of some. Even the almighty Tyrannosaurus, unable to take shelter, will not resist. Only the animals that were hidden in caves or on hillsides survived. Taking refuge in safe places, they watched their world collapse. The shockwave raises the whole of continental North America, which is transformed into a giant inferno. However, a curious mammal pokes its head out of its burrow to take stock of the situation. It is our ancestor, the Purgatorius. The future of humanity is still possible thanks to this small animal that has remained alive in the shelter of its burrow. Ten minutes after the impact, the shockwave dissipates. It released all its energy before reaching Canada. Some animals are still unaware of what has just happened. Suddenly, a distant rumbling is heard. The earth shakes. It is possibly the biggest earthquake that the world has ever known since its birth. The impact of the meteorite caused an earthquake of magnitude 13, hundreds of times more violent than all those recorded. The tremor crossed the planet, causing huge landslides as far as Antarctica. For the animals, the earthquake is the first indication that the end of the world has come. 30 minutes after the impact, the planet is still shaken by the tremors of the earthquake and the aftershocks will last several days. Some animals cling to life, but the catastrophe takes on a whole new dimension. A giant tsunami is on its way. A gigantic wall of water the size of a mountain range is moving inexorably toward the coast. The worst 24 hours in the history of the world are not over yet. After hitting the Earth 150 times faster than a fighter jet, the asteroid continues to trigger a chain of cataclysms. The shockwave of vaporized rocks burns the entire continental United States, and the aftershocks of a 13 magnitude earthquake are still shaking the Earth's crust. 45 minutes after the impact, for animals far from the collision zone in Africa, Asia, Europe, or Antarctica, life continues but those living not far from the coast will soon see death approaching. The ocean has risen under the violence of the impact and the gigantic tsunami is approaching. On the coast of West Africa, the dinosaurs are just recovering from the earthquake when suddenly the sea recedes. The giant tsunami crosses the Atlantic at 621 miles per hour with a height of more than 3,000 feet it reaches the coasts and the land, covering everything in its path, drowning the species present, and radically changing the climate by greatly impacting the terrestrial flora. Even aquatic creatures such as the giant Mosasaurus are caught by the current before being thrown back on the shore. They struggle for a few moments, but their death is inevitable. Five hours after the impact, the ocean's anger subsides. In the four corners of the globe, small groups of survivors make their way through the rubble, but a new cataclysm threatens them. The sky is falling. The Earth has just suffered an earthquake and a giant tsunami, but the most destructive effect of the impact is the millions of tons of rock propelled into space by the enormous explosion. All the rock from the 124 mile diameter crater was blasted into the atmosphere. Blocks sometimes larger than the size of a house. The smaller ones were sent into orbit before coming straight down to the planet as meteorites. Entire pieces of the Earth's crust have re-entered the atmosphere. This is the largest meteor shower of all time. This phenomenon lasts several hours. The sky turns into an inferno.
as soon as they fall back on the ground, they ignite hundreds and hundreds of miles, ravaging forests and continents. The fire continues to spread across the globe from tree to tree, from land to land, and never stops. The fires are violent and burn everything they encounter. The fires are all the more impressive and dangerous because the asteroid brought with it different metals such as radium, quartz, and also some other rocks. These are all melted as a result of high temperatures, so they're an important indicator of the heat spreading on the planet, which is extremely high. Six hours after the impact, the arid plains of Mongolia are surprisingly calm. The rain of fire has not struck yet, but now it is time for a change. The life of the animals is quickly interrupted by the deluge of meteorites that consumes everything in its path. At this distance from the impact point, the meteorites are smaller. Incredible as it may seem, they're no bigger than a grain of sand. On the other side of the world, in the depths of the Atlantic Ocean, the ground is covered with glass beads. By crossing the atmosphere, the molten rock was transformed into glass. Several hours after the impact, the whole planet is in flames. The apocalypse strikes randomly at vulnerable creatures who have not been prepared for such a cataclysm. They can only rely on their instincts, and their instincts tell them to flee. The temperature on the surface of the globe rises in a few hours. The heat is unbearable. It is so hot that in some places, the rivers start to boil. Everywhere, fires broke out, consuming the dead and dying. As a result of this new heat, which increases until it reaches temperatures that are truly unbearable for everyone, huge clouds of smoke form and cover the entire planet, creating a heavy and extremely saturated atmosphere. The air becomes unbreathable and the heat more and more suffocating. 10 hours after the impact, the world is unrecognizable. Billions of animals have perished in an endless chain of catastrophes. And yet, some specimens resist. The Purgatorius crouches underground, waiting for the end of the storm. While on the surface, the world of dinosaurs is collapsing, our ancestor does what he has to to survive, staying under cover, rationing his food, and above all, not going out. From his burrow, he hears the cries of a dying world. Soon, the strongest will die out, and the weakest will inherit the planet. Whether it is other species or those of the great ferocious animals that are dinosaurs, they find themselves burned alive suffocating by the smoke that spreads in the air, killed by the waves of suffocating heat. It is a real mass extinction event that falls on the earth. The skin of most animals is not able to fight against such a change and even less against such high and burning flames. The dinosaurs now find themselves on a hot, dry earth with no vegetation, no food, and no way to cool off. The different catastrophes have had enormous consequences on the different animals, but also on the vegetation. This last one is an important source of food, especially for the herbivores still alive at this precise moment. The numerous carnivorous dinosaurs saw their main prey, the herbivores, disappear in number for lack of food. The flora was totally ravaged. Soon, the herbivorous dinosaurs died of hunger because their main source of food had almost disappeared from the Earth's surface. They therefore gradually died out, dragging the rest of the food chain down with them. In fact, since the latter disappeared, it became difficult for the carnivorous dinosaurs to survive. Unable to continue their diet, they were underfed and in imminent danger of death. The food chain collapsed as the heat of the earth spread through the water, gradually reaching the marine world. 
14 hours after the impact, life on Earth is almost totally exterminated. Night falls, a night where the dinosaurs will not come out alive. In the Yucatan Peninsula, the crater formed by the asteroid is a smoking caldera. A gigantic circle of 124 miles in diameter delimits it. In a few minutes, mountains rose to 3.1 miles in altitude. It will take thousands of years for erosion to erase them. Among the debris, we find crystallized carbon, tiny diamonds that testify to the phenomenal heat of the impact. In red, nothing survived within 994 miles. In orange, 3,107 miles from the point of collision, some insects and small animals are still alive. You have to travel 4,971 miles here in yellow to encounter survivors among the dinosaurs. These are almost always isolated specimens. The few survivors wander through an apocalyptic landscape of uprooted trees, scree, and blazes. A single day was enough to decide the fate of the dinosaurs. Scientists cannot say how quickly they died out. In a few hours, in a few days, in a few months, in a few years. After all, it doesn't matter if the dinosaurs disappeared in a day, a year, a century, a millennium. The important thing is to know that there was a fundamental change in their ecosystem between the end of the Cretaceous and the beginning of the Tertiary. Three days after the impact in North America, the fires have finally subsided. They give way to a charred landscape. But another cataclysm falls on a planet. A new wave of extermination threatens the remaining dinosaurs. The climate is dangerously modified by smoke, soot, ashes, and the accumulation of toxic substances. Among them, sulfur, produced by the vaporization of the rock during the impact. When the meteorite crashed in the present-day Yucatan Peninsula, it landed on a bed of gypsum, a mineral rich in sulfate. Millions of tons of this caustic element were released into the atmosphere within a few hours. The sulfur comes into contact with water in the atmosphere, and after a series of chemical reactions, it turns into sulfuric acid. The sky is now poisoned. The life-giving water now brings only suffering and death. Corrosive enough to dissolve rock, this deadly rain burns skin and flesh. With no place to hide, the great dinosaurs suffer a real martyrdom. All around the globe, formidable climate phenomena exterminate the animal population. In present-day North America, heavy acid rain sculpted the new landscape. Before the extinction, there was a beautiful coastal plain with lush vegetation. After the extinction, its forests were drowned by gigantic floods. But while one dinosaur after another was wiped out, the once vulnerable mammals proved extraordinarily resourceful. Their small size allowed them to escape the cataclysm because they were able to take refuge in a safe place. In their burrows protected from acid rain, they hear the agony of the helpless dinosaurs. 4 days after the impact, the corrosive showers begin to poison the last bastion of the giants, the ocean. Before the asteroid hit, it was a universe teeming with life and home to a wide variety of aquatic animals. Acid rain wipes out their kingdom. Combined with the ashes, they settle on the surface of the water loading it with a toxic deposit. The plankton is literally dissolved, which constitutes the base of the food chain. But some find a way to protect their offspring. The sharks will survive the massacre. These incredibly resistant creatures have survived several mass extinctions thanks to an unorthodox method. Some of these viviparous sharks are known to engage in intrauterine cannibalism. In the womb, the embryos devour each other, thus ensuring the survival of the strongest. This has allowed them to survive for over 400 million years, 
while many species have become extinct. Our planet is plunged into chaos. For seven days, fire and acid rain have almost eradicated all traces of life. But the worst is yet to come. When the meteorite collided with the Earth, it propelled a phenomenal amount of debris into the atmosphere, along with the smoke, soot, and dust generated by the fires. The winds then spread ashes all around the globe, gradually masking the sunlight. The Earth was plunged into darkness. At that time, many dinosaurs had good vision and relatively well-developed hearing, but a limited sense of smell. Moving by sound and light, they suddenly found themselves in the dark. For them, this new reality is terrifying. Even in daylight, the darkness is total. Only animals that can find their way in the dark have a chance to survive. This enormous dark cloud remains, posted on the surface, and does not clear. Even worse, this cloud is located at a very low altitude and prevents the Earth from receiving any light source that could come from the Sun or from anywhere else. The planet is now plunged in the most complete darkness. The dust continues to spread everywhere on the surface of the Earth, whether on the ground on the few remaining places of life, or even in the air thus preventing any source of light, but also of heat to enter. It is thus a long and endless night, which settles on the Earth to not withdraw anymore. Two months have passed, and the darkness gives no respite to the planet. It affects the behavior of many dinosaurs. All animals that have a brain can go crazy, and the dinosaurs had a brain. We can say that dinosaurs were largely intelligent enough to react, memorize, and be permanently affected by darkness. Once again, our ancestor seems best equipped to withstand cataclysms. By the time of the dinosaurs, mammals had evolved to be nocturnal animals. Therefore, part of their brain and their sense allowed them to move around at night. As an endless night sets in, the vegetation spared by the fire gradually succumbs to the darkness. The release of different elements in the air, such as soot, sulfur, as well as different dust particles, eventually led to a brutal cooling of the planet. The shock, just like the warming, is immediate. After the flames and the excessively high temperatures, the Earth is now plunged into a total darkness and slowly slides toward an icy cold. The planet is calm, silent, almost dead. The disasters have stopped, but the entire surface is now completely unrecognizable. Four months after the impact, the sun finally starts to shine. It reveals a frightening spectacle. Chaotic, deformed, and desolate landscapes while the world is at its worst, a new cataclysm is preparing. A cold wave is about to strike. Life on Earth is already hanging by a thread. Will it be able to withstand this new ordeal? The survivors are faced with a new torment, the cold. Although the sun is now shining generously, freezing temperatures are settling in. The heat of the impact has generated large quantities of sulfur dioxide. This invisible gas lets light through and absorbs heat, producing a reverse greenhouse effect. An ice winter invaded the planet, with temperatures dropping below negative 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Six months after the impact, this once warm and lush land turned its back on life. All the rules have changed, both the biological and geological systems. The frequency of the rainfall, the temperatures, everything has been turned upside down. Day and night, the dinosaurs have no way out. Those who live near the poles often had to endure temperatures below zero at night. 
the green and lush Mongolia before the disaster, is now a huge, desolate landscape, covered with acid snow and bathed in pink light. Seven months after the impact, in the merciless universe reduced to nothing, a few rare species seem destined to survive. Among them, our distant ancestor, the Purgatorius. Its warm and comfortable burrow insulates this small mammal from the cold, and when it comes to feeding, the Purgatorius is not picky. The mammals were scavengers. They ate anything and everything. They had no choice if they wanted to survive the series of disasters that followed the impact. If we want to make a comparison, the closest animal today to the mammals of that time is the possum. The possum is not an herbivore, insectivore, or scavenger. It is an animal that eats everything it finds. This is how the Purgatorius managed to survive when most other species are dying out. Nine months after the impact, only a handful of dinosaurs still survive. Giant herbivores like the Triceratops and the Titanosaurus have long since died out, but a few carnivores, such as the Tyrannosaurus, managed to survive by feeding on carcasses. Unfortunately, food sources are gradually running out. They will soon have no choice but to devour each other. The reign of the dinosaurs is coming to an end. The wind has changed. The dinosaur dynasty is doomed. The extinction of the dinosaurs should not be seen as an event that occurred on a given day, but as the aftermath of a planetary shock that lasted for weeks, months, or even years. The species that survived are not those that came out alive on the first day, but those that lasted until the end. In a final show of desperation, the survivors resorted to fratricidal fighting. The large carnivores such as the Tyrannosaurus have nothing left to eat except their fellow creatures. Cannibalism digs the grave of the Tyrannosaurus. In less than a year, chain reactions reduce this formidable species to a single survivor. Considerably weakened, it can barely stand on its feet. In this world where the law of strongest reigns, the Tyrannosaurus is losing the battle. One of the greatest predators of all time is being decimated by starvation. The extinction represents much more than the end of a species that's existed for millions of years. It is the end of a species and its future. Dinosaurs are now a distant memory. For the vast majority of them, they become extinct in this fifth mass extinction event known on the planet. Although they fought for tens and tens of millions of years against different catastrophes, this last one got the better of them. This is the end of the reign of these great predators that were dinosaurs. In just one year, the entire planet was practically emptied of all life forms. All the dinosaurs are dead, and with them, the marine reptiles such as the Mosasaurus. The ocean is nothing but a huge empty basin, except for a few rare species of fish and sharks. The pterosaurs, those flying reptiles, have also disappeared. All the animals bigger than a raccoon or a dog are dead. The smaller they were, the better their chances. But even among the small ones, it was a lottery. One in 11 mammals survived. Almost 70% of species have disappeared from the face of the Earth. The Earth is now a vast desert that looks nothing like what we know today. Many forms of life have disappeared. They've become extinct following the great catastrophes known after the arrival of the asteroid. The impact caused by the asteroid leaves the entire surface of the Earth completely devastated. In the blink of an eye, the fauna and flora disappeared leaving a dull and empty world in place of the living and abundant planet that was there millennia earlier. From now on, it is a flat silence that reigns. There is no more noise, no gestures. Everything seems stopped, paused. 
Whether it is the different environmental changes, the volcanic eruptions in India, or the impact caused by the arrival of the asteroid in the Yucatan Peninsula, each catastrophe has brought its share of deaths with it. Most of the animals are no more. The flora is totally deconstructed. The world is abandoned and it will take hundreds of years before it can be rebuilt properly. The nuclear winter lasted about 10 years and was followed by a greenhouse effect that lasted 10,000 years. The oceans took between 200,000 and 500,000 years to recover. Although it seems that the heat wave followed by the cooling and the darkness took with them the majority of living beings, this is not really the case. In fact, a certain branch of the dinosaurs survived. The birds will resist the catastrophe, hidden in the shadows, some of them surviving as well as possible. Others managed to escape this sad fate by using strategies and resources, especially the mammals. Cunning, small, and full of advantages, some of them have managed to survive the different catastrophes. As the earth becomes calm and the disaster seem to have completely ceased, the smallest mammals begin to come out of their hiding places. They start to live again. Each of them has a very important characteristic, weight. They are all mammals weighing no more than two pounds. No larger mammal seems to have survived. If it is the smaller ones that now populate the environment, this is due to very specific reasons. The first element that played in their favor is their low food requirements. Very different from the large predators that were the dinosaurs, these small mammals are totally omnivorous. That is to say, they do not have a particular diet. Consequently, they were the least affected by the famine linked to these catastrophes. Since they were not obliged to feed on vegetation, the disappearance of a large part of the flora did not really affect them. There's an additional reason which allowed them to survive at the level of food. Mammals are different from many animals. They do not have the same need for food. In fact, they're able to survive by ingesting much less food than the majority of other beings. The lack of food linked to the different disasters has surely affected them, but much less than the majority of other animals. Beyond the survival of mammals of less than two pounds, biodiversity, which has also experienced a huge, if not total, degradation, takes some time before recovering. The latter is gradually beginning to regain its strength and the ecosystem is getting back on track. The different catastrophes were so violent, sudden, and close together that it is impossible for the ecosystem to rebuild itself in a few days. The Earth can therefore hope for a new life. A century after the impact of the meteorite, the giant crater is now buried underwater, but the ocean remains a lifeless universe. The plankton as well as most of the fish and large marine reptiles have disappeared. This fabulously rich world has become a biological desert. Fortunately, terrestrial animals have more resources. Without predators to decimate them, the few survivors are multiplying rapidly. The turtles, like the crocodiles, have buried themselves deep in the mud as soon as the asteroids first spark, but the warm-blooded animals did not fare so well. If we assume that dinosaurs were warm-blooded animals, they needed to eat a lot and all of the time so they could not hibernate properly. For our distant ancestor, the Purgatorius, a new day dawns. This nocturnal scavenger can now venture out into the daylight without fear. He who once served as prey to dinosaurs can take his revenge. The weakest have inherited the planet. This is proof of the importance of random events in the history of the universe. Some things are written and cannot be avoided or changed. Others strike at random and without warning. Modern technology could do little against the collision of such a meteorite. A 165 million year old world has already been swept away. No one can claim that humanity will not one day suffer the same fate as the dinosaurs.
100,000 years later, the ecosystem and biodiversity have both evolved at a rapid pace, despite what the various natural disasters suggested. As in the time before the extinction of the dinosaurs, the largest mammals now reach a weight of about 18 pounds. They have evolved again and are slowly repopulating the planet. Life is slowly coming back, leaving the fifth mass extinction as a distant memory of another era. The flora is also slowly regaining its rights on the Earth and is reforming step by step. As it begins to reform, it means that the conditions of life are improving and giving the opportunity to the different living beings. Forests then start to cover the surface of the Earth again, this time with palm trees. They take back the important place they had during the Upper Cretaceous and will always remain, moreover, a central element on the surface of the globe. The planet is gradually rebuilt and life begins to resume its normal course. Biodiversity having restarted and the ecosystem having rebuilt little by little, the Earth is slowly preparing to start a new era. However, despite its reconstruction and its new environment, no dinosaurs reappear. Thus, due to a combination of changes in the ecosystem and natural disasters, the reign of the dinosaur ends. The completion of their domination is done at the same time as the end of the Upper Cretaceous period. After having populated the planet Earth for millions of years, after having been among the biggest and most ferocious predators, after having terrorized hundreds of other animal species thanks to their impressive domination, these enormous animals did not manage to resist this umpteenth mass extinction. They became extinct and disappeared forever, along with the period that marked their reign. This fifth mass extinction event does not only mark the end of the dinosaurs, but also the end of the Mesozoic era, 66 million years ago.